and the most likely to receive a purple edit in Survivor goes to... Congratulations, Chelsea! Come on down! Purple edit in Survivor, what is it? Where did it come from? How do you spot a purple edit? Is this in any way related to Barney the Purple Dinosaur? Ladies and gents, my name is Pridium, and in this video, I'll have the answers to those questions and more, a lot more actually, as we talk about an aspect of Survivor that kind of like the purple edit itself, doesn't get much attention from a majority of the viewing audience. Holly bringing in the tarp and the rice definitely gives me hope, but from the mom's point of view, she just says, suck it up, you only have a few more days, but it's like, I've been sucking it up for 28 days. There is, I have nothing left to suck. But before I get to this purplish, violety edit thing, I want to talk about the editing of Survivor from a big picture perspective. For those of you who don't know, Survivor is not a show that happens live. It's completely edited into a nice 42 minute package each week in the form of an episode that collectively come together to form what we call a season. Pretty um thanks, that was enlightening. No, 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 wait, just a minute. When you really think about it, each episode of Survivor is just a highlight reel of the story the producers are trying to tell for the season. Consider Considering that they basically film 24 hours a day for all 39 days of the show, and we only get about 15 episodes around 42 minutes each, give or take, that's like, let me get out my calculator one sec, that's like 0.01% of the entire season that we the audience get to actually see. A lot of that footage is garbage, just them sleeping or talking about something besides strategy, but it does stand to reason that we don't get to see most of what happens. And then because we only have so much time to watch out of so much time that was filmed overall, the producers and editors need to hone in on the action to give us the most compelling show possible. Whether that's finding an idol or making big flips or just being loud and obnoxious or even tearing up as you watch your game fall to pieces, the wide range of content needs to be trimmed down while also making sense from the point of a narrative. The game definitely highlights a certain aspect of your personality and it zones in on that aspect of your personality and really magnifies it. I don't go around batting my eyelashes and shaking my ass all day. I just do it sometimes when I'm playing Survivor, you know. <laughs> See, the editors intend to tell a story that is largely dictated by the results of the season. So you get the winner, who is commonly the main character, the losing finalists, who are perhaps the second in command or the sidekicks, or potential adversaries, the players, who are just shy of the final tribal, or also maybe the final hurdles that the winner has to overcome, and so on and so forth. Essentially, what I'm really trying to say is each player in the cast fills a role, both as they are cast when they are put on the show, just as much as when the season is progressing to the end. The characters change from season to season, but overall their roles in the narrative don't. It's why one season you might have Sarah Lucina as the strategic mastermind winner, while in another season she's just a mid-season obstacle for the eventual winner to overcome. With a season called Game Changers, I feel like somebody will get anxious and feel as though they need to make a move, which will put a target on their back, and then I'm gonna be the silent assassin. <laughs> Sarah, the tribe has spoken. A lot of us like to think that Survivor is a show where everyone is equally important, but that's never going to be the case. It's just like in a book or really any story, not every character gets a point of view, although in Survivor every character does get a chance to speak, just some more than others. Because as Jonathan Penner once said, You don't have to say something, you want to say something, you want to say this guy's driving me out of my mind. He's a complete dipstick. See that's what they need in a confessional, is your truth. And if your truth is, he's all right, he's okay, your truth isn't compelling enough. There's only 44 minutes. You don't read it. And they don't have time for someone to say, well, I don't know, he's okay. It doesn't mean anything. It's not part of the story. It doesn't progress it. And it doesn't make you a compelling character. So let's talk about this purple edit now that we've spent the last half hour setting it all up. The purple edit is when a player on Survivor is basically not on Survivor. I mean, they're there, but you wouldn't know it because they're never shown. They're invisible. They barely get any moments to talk to the audience, to have a confessional about their game or their thoughts on things. They're rarely shown in discussions and ultimately 
recently, they just have an incredible lack of impact on the season to the point where it's ironically noticeable how unnoticeable they are. The purple edit is not so much for players who are under the radar and maybe get a confessional here or there. It's reserved for those who are remarkably absent from every episode for one reason or another. Maybe they got idled out of the game, maybe they got voted out unceremoniously in a predictable fashion, maybe they're not much more than a number in the grand scheme of things, despite having their own agenda behind the curtains. Either way, it's not so much about the why, but just the fact that they exist in the first place. So why is this concept of being invisible on the show called the purple edit? Well, it's time to don our survivor geek glasses because we're gonna go all the way back to the autumn of 2010 during the airing of season 21 Survivor Nicaragua. During that season there were two players with the name of Kelly who were both on the same tribe. Because of this confusion they needed to differentiate between the two and one of them happened to have a prosthetic leg while the other had a streak of purple in her hair. So they went with the prosthetic, no the purple hair obviously don't be like that. I what clean happened? my pants. Had a birth defect. You are a rock star. All right. All right. I love it. I've always been fascinated on how those things work. Like, how do you tell it to move? <laughs> she does have a thought. The Kelly with purple streak in her hair was nicknamed Purple Kelly. You wouldn't really know it if it wasn't for her name, but either way, the name was born. Purple Kelly, as she was known, set a precedent in Survivor, not for anything she did, but because of how little she was shown on the season. She was like an endangered species about to go extinct. Spotting her was rare. Hearing her speak was even rarer. It was almost like she was mute. Come here. Come here. Why did Nate take him aside <laughs> on a volcano? <laughs> you never talk, really. I know. It's kind of funny, huh? Weird. To give you a better idea of what this means, through the first 10 episodes of the show, she had one confessional where she sat down and spoke to the audience. One confessional. One. That's. That's crazy. It was also unprecedented. It was, without a doubt, the least visible edit to ever exist in all of Survivor. She may as well have not been on the season. And then when you compare it to one of the most visible players ever, Russell Hance in Samoa, he had 76 confessionals after 10 episodes compared to Kelly, who had one. You get to milk your own milk, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. You get to milk your own milk and that sounds amazing. We should have won <laughs> and we should be going because that is amazing. <laughs> Oh my god. From there on, it was known that any player who received almost no airtime was basically not on the show, was given the title of Purple in their name. So some examples of this are Purple Whitney in South Pacific, Purple Brenda in Karamoan, and more recently, Purple Chelsea from Survivor Ghost Island. Mind you, none of these players actually had purple in their hair except for the original Purple Kelly. It's just the name. I personally like to call them the Expendabells. Spotting a purple edit like those above is pretty simple. If you are 10 episodes into a season and they come up on the screen and you say, who? Probably a purple edit. Boy, right away, Joel steps up to me and goes, it's Mary. I'm like, where did Mary come from? Basically, just take note of whether a player has ever talked to you alone on the sofa with their name tag embedded at the bottom of the screen. If they never get to confess anything, congrats. You've got a purple edit on your hands. They are irrelevant, they are unnoteworthy, and they probably feel like they went on the show and somehow only walked away with this lousy t-shirt made by this guy. And speaking of this guy, can you believe that this guy on the screen with his purple t-shirt and everything went all the way to the end of the game, got fourth place, and somehow received a purple edit? And he wore a purple shirt by coincidence. Oy vey. So you telling me he's all of a sudden Superman because he wins two? He, he's not some superstar. Story, man. You start thinking that, you start getting weak in the mind, thinking you can't beat him like you're stepping in the ring with Mike Tyson. He's no Mike Tyson. He's Brett. So that's the purple edit in Survivor. It's when you're so invisible, you stand out like an assassin hiding in plain sight with plastic knives. So even though I just did say some harsh things, what do I think about the purple edit? Like I outlined at the start of this video, I get why this kind of editing exists, but that doesn't stop me from separating the fact that other seasons of the show have had more balanced editing and been just as good, if not greater, than those with purple edited players in them. And to be completely honest, I don't know what exactly the editors are working with behind the scenes 
when they edit these episodes. I don't know if they truly just don't like what these purple edit players are giving them, so instead they choose to go to someone else for what they deem is a more compelling overall product. Because, make no mistake, that's what this all comes down to. Who the producer believes will sell their show the best. If we can prevent Brett from winning immunity, then today will be a wonderful day. There's, there's gonna be no argument. Uh, he has to go. He's a little punk. He's 110 pounds. He's not faster than me. He's not stronger than me. So he's not a huge threat to win the challenges. Brett wins immunity. Brett wins immunity. Brett wins individual immunity. It's not about being fair. It's never really been about being fair. It's about being good, nay, great. Many seasons of Survivor are truly great TV and the best seasons live by their cast, which is what the editors aim to showcase when they give certain players top billing and others invisibility cloaks, to put it nicely. I do think it's kind of a shame when I see these players get off the show and in the Ponderosas or post-exit interviews or anything like that, they become very interesting people that can make me laugh and really just feel anything. But I do sometimes wonder if they could have delivered just as well when they were sleep deprived, starved for food, and lacking energy or just that gusto. Maybe they just don't become telegenic or relevant to the action compared to their peers. I come into Ponderosa and I'm like, oh, you get to do this video. It's super cool. It's Ponderosa video. It shows your time here and how you spent it. And everyone has a thing. So I'm like, cool thing. I've always wanted a thing. What's my thing? Well, you know what? I think a good thing for your thing to be would just be to, uh... You, you can do dolphin watching. Do <laughs> you know how many dolphins we've seen out here? That is so boring. You know how many dolphins we've seen? How many? Zero, but you gotta start looking and <laughs> them. <laughs> He's useless. I'll just say this. My favorite seasons of every competitive reality show, be it Survivor, Big Brother, The Amazing Race, or their international counterparts, tend to be when I care about every player in the game to some major degree. Whether I love them or I hate them, but I can't do either with a purple edit when it tells me not to bother with that player because the writing is clearly on the wall. And you know what? For the matter, it goes double for every player that's barely featured at all, really, purple or otherwise. Purple edits, to me, despite all the laughs, are a cause for a concern because these are people that are impacting the show in some way and are reduced to non-factors that contribute almost nothing to this season. And I just, I know that that's not actually the case. Coming back here, having such an amazing camp and then having that cup of coffee gave me a sense of home and it made me feel like I had the energy to keep fighting out here. And I have to believe that there are many people like me out there who have watched a lot of these shows and just know any season is at its best when the entire playing field is represented. And maybe, if we're lucky, even in contention. These aren't answers to the problem, just words to bring it some attention. And I think that's where I'm gonna leave this long form answer to a short question. So let me turn it to you guys. What do you think about this purple edit in Survivor? Do you think it hurts the show or doesn't really make a difference? Do you care? Or maybe that's the point. Should you care? Or should Purple Kelly return for a second chance? Hashtag bring back purple. Regardless, my name is Pretty. I'm saying thank you for watching. Don't forget to grab your edit on the way out and I will see you in the next video once I get a confessional telling you all about it. Nayaka, what do you think we should do with your torch? What happened to there? It got smoked. <laughs> Is that the worst, Ma? But Nayanka, they didn't quit. You wanna go? Yes. Go. Head out. This is a mental game. If I can hang in there mentally, then I can win.